The War of 1812 is a story as much about a nation in conflict with itself as it is a clash of countries. Early 19th century America is a loose association of scattered states, bordered by a vast wilderness to the west and miles of ocean to its east. Isolated communities are surrounded by uncharted and hostile territory. Americans are intertwined by one thread, shipping. On January 7, 1815, after weeks of holding off the British invaders, Andrew Jackson's ragtag army of 4,000 men lie in wait. At any moment, the inevitable attack will begin. The Battle of New Orleans will be the climactic showdown of the War of 1812. As the evening of January 7th appears, the men behind line Jackson know that an attack is imminent. They can hear the sounds directly in front of them, and yet their morale is extremely high because in their mind, they have beaten the British twice. And they feel themselves almost invincible, each man relying upon that piece of wall that he himself has constructed. And it is their morale, coupled with good luck, which will turn the tide of the battle. Just outside the city, thousands of reinforcements led by General Pakenham intend to overwhelm the Americans with sheer numbers and take advantage of a glaring weakness in their defense. Pakenham's plan is aggressive, but it's too complicated. He's got too many columns moving forward, and everything has got to be timed to perfection. In the pre-dawn mist of January 8, 1815, the British begin their advance. From the start, problems plague Pakenham's troops. The muddy riverbanks slow the launching of the attack force. Once in the water, the swift current sends some boats too far downstream before they can reach the west bank. By the time they make it across the river, it will be too late to affect the battle. Elsewhere, the 44th Regiment, part of the main assault force, blunders. The primary assault column is on the march, and the regiment that's supposed to carry the scaling ladders have forgotten them. They've left them behind. When they go back to get them, the column's already on the move. At sunrise, the mist clears, exposing the oncoming British force, rocket fire lighting their way. Press your lines. Jackson calls to his men. They are near enough now, gentlemen. You may fire when ready. A Kentucky rifleman remembers how his fellow defenders responded to Old Hickory's orders. Steady, boys. Hold your fire. Take aim! Fire! Then the heavy iron cannon and some thousands of small arms joined in and made the ground shake under our feet. As soon as the firing began, Captain Patterson came running along. He shouted, shoot low, boys, shoot low, break them. The British Army has lost its commander. In just 20 minutes, the British High Command has been obliterated. The survivors realize they will never reach New Orleans and halt the attack. Improbably, Old Hickory's ragtag army has just trounced the world's best fighting force in little more than two hours. News of the victory spreads a euphoric nationalism throughout the country. But not everyone is celebrating. Those who oppose the war are about to pay dearly. The Federalist delegates who had pushed for secession are labeled as traitors. But for Andrew Jackson, the savior of New Orleans, his heroic exploits catapult him from the battlefield to the White House as the nation's seventh president in 1829. His election confirms the coming of age of a new America, forged by men who shaped the times through which they passed. The War of 1812 shouldn't be forgotten because that's a turning point in the development of American democracy, American government, the American sense of who we are. It was the one moment 
that we needed psychologically to prove that we had a right to exist as an independent and free nation. And we did it at that time. After the War of 1812, we proved we were here to stay. And that's why I think it should be remembered by all Americans today. History remembers the War of 1812 as the Forgotten War. It is a story of courage, endurance, and a little bit of luck. Forged by fire, united by will, a young nation defied the odds and won.